My name is Jillian Prendergast. I am chair of the finance committee meeting. Um, as a preliminary, uh, this meeting is being conducted um, remote via Zoom uh, in accordance um, with the remote meeting law. Um, as a preliminary matter, um, please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated to be on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, Linda? Yes, I can hear you. Peter? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Kevin? I saw you say yes. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I was I was I was calling up my my note taking. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um all right. So, um it looks like Khadija is not here. Um it's hard to do with one screen. And I don't see Katie, but perhaps they'll dial on a little bit late. Um, all right, so uh, I will move on to the first topic. So um, before we jump, oh, I have to read. Um, let me see if there's anything else I have to read. Um, I always forget about this part. Um, so I will say um, this is, um, we don't expect to have public comments in this meeting, um, but if there are public comments, um, please use the action to raise your hand or otherwise identify yourself. Um, and we will add it as appropriate to um, to the meeting minutes uh, and also to uh, open the floor. Uh, while there is an option for remote attendance and our participation, um, it will not be suspended if there are technological problems. Um, please do note that this meeting is being recorded and that other folks may be able to see you. So please take care not to screen share your computer. Uh, anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. Uh, the meeting materials are on board docs. Um, you can find that on the town's website. There is a link to board docs um, where I post the agenda and uh, key documents um, that are in here. There is also a link to the YouTube channel where these recordings are posted after the meeting. Um, so now we are uh, going to go to the agenda. Um, before we do so, please permit me to cover ground rules um, for clear and accurate minutes. So I will introduce each person on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, we'll go down the list of members, um, inviting comments, questions. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Um, okay, and I think those are, that's the main stuff off the script um, for tonight. So um, before we jump into the agenda, uh, I did wanna let you know that sort of one of our main speakers from the Council on Aging uh, is was unable to make it um, tonight. So this might be perhaps a somewhat abbreviated meeting. Um, excuse me. So we will, um, so I sort of noticed, um, she sent me an email earlier in the week um, and I sent that sort of around to the committee to let everyone know. So, um, but that is something that we will definitely have to a future agenda uh, and she will let me know when she's able um, to attend. So we can look at the meetings um, in November potentially um, as for this for this uh, important topic. So I did circulate the items um, that she wanted to talk about, um, but she did say that she would prefer if she could be present to sort of do uh, an explanation and give us um, some background information before we get too in depth with the document that she sent around. So I did wanna let you know that before we jump into the agenda, um, that if you know anyone well, uh, I guess if Justine's on the call for that particular item, we will not be talking about it in depth tonight. So um, so otherwise we can go into the normal agenda. Um, if you'd like, I can share the screen um, or if you have it on your own computer, it might not be necessary. But I think the, the first topic is just a debrief of the special town meeting. Um, so this is sort of the topic uh, 
that I was hoping Katie would be here for. So, um, but I'll sort of open the floor to the rest of the committee. So my understanding, I was unable to attend the meeting uh, in person, but it's my understanding that all of the articles have passed. Um, so I'd be interested to hear for the members who did attend how the meeting went, if there's anything that you think went well or could be changed that I can bring back um, to Dick Downey, the moderator, to um, improve or otherwise give feedback for future meetings. Um, I can I can go ahead if no one else objects. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so um, the turnout to town meeting was spectacular. Uh, we almost ran out of space. Um, it was definitely a significant change um, from the annual and even the prior special town meeting where we were concerned of even achieving a quorum. This time we had the opposite concern of are we going to have enough space uh, to fit everyone in. Uh, so my read is that a lot of people turned out um, for the school building article and also turned out um, for the senior center vote. I think both uh, those items were a big, con uh, big concern to numerous people and were the key drivers of the turnout. Uh, as for suggestions for Dick Downey, I would just say that perhaps we should consider um, returning back to the drive-in movie format. I'm not sure of the details. So Dick also sent out a survey to our residents asking for their feedback. Uh, I imagine that this may be one way that we could satisfy some of the uh, needs requested in that feedback. Um, I also think that the drive-in town meeting would also reduce uh, the risk of having to postpone a meeting due to overflow conditions. I also think it, it's also assistive uh, for turnout purposes because of the ease of having children in the car, um, having children with you at town meetings so that I know child care is provided, uh, but I think that uh, parents have an easier time um, you know, if they don't have to arrange childcare, and may many parents probably weren't even aware that childcare is being provided um, by the town for town meeting. Um, so by the fact that the drive-in format, you can have the child in the car with you and not have to disrupt uh, the rest of the meeting. Uh, and, you know, they can sit back and read a book, um, I think is a excellent format that solves both the challenges we have, both on the lack of quorum and the um, lack of space. Thanks, I'm just taking some notes. Um, Kevin, I was not able to attend, but were there any questions or anything that came up for FinCom um, regarding our recommendations for the school or the senior center or any of the other warrant articles? Uh, so we, so at the special town meeting, we did have a discussion of uh, what to do. Uh, we checked with Dick Downey to make sure that there were uh, no amendments on the floor. There are amendments coming. There are no amendments coming. Uh, in terms of questions, um, nobody really. I don't think we. I don't think we got a direct question from the committee. I, I don't think anyone came up to the mic and I don't recall anyone coming up to the mic and asking a question of FinCom. I think we just provided, I think what we did is we provided context, uh, particularly for the senior center vote of why, uh, why we made the recommendation that we did, uh, particularly on the, the counts of the logistical issues of paying out of free cash. I think was the big focus of what we said, but I don't think I, I do not recall anyone directly asking us um, for further details beyond what was in the recommendation. Okay. Is there any other? Uh, yeah, I don't really have much to add to that. Um, I thought it okay. went well. It was great to see the turnout. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that Kevin didn't mention. So, did they talk at all in the meeting about how they're going to satisfy the article from Precash, or that's more of a we're gonna talk about that after the meeting kind of deal? No, uh, like it's still coming from the same. Advice. It was presented as a non-binding article, which is town yeah. council's opinion. You're talking about okay. the senior center? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it was non-binding, so it was. Um, yeah, there was no discussion about stuff like that. Okay, that that was yeah. my main question: how it was presented. Thank you. Yeah, I think that that legal opinion is going to be um, immensely helpful, and I think. I I hope we did a very good job of setting that expectation that this is non-binding and that it would be very difficult for us to, as a town, to adhere to the letter of that article. Uh, I hope the the I, I I hope for the record that um, all of the residents are under that impression that we did not. Um, there's no misunderstanding there. I'll also point out that you know it might very well be because everybody knew that it was non-binding so we weren't really tying our hands like one way or the other but the support for yeah, that exactly. uh, article was overwhelming yeah which i i really i really wish because it would have been a great segue to ha to um have the council of aging uh representative here because i think that would be a good you know, coming off of that special town meeting would be a good lead way into that discussion. Um, I second Nathan's um, assessment. You know, this is a non-binding article, so it's it's easy to it's easy to vote in favor of it. Uh, I think the difficult decisions are going to have to be made uh, when we start talking about payment source um, and how we're actually going to pay for this. Uh, the sources of funding are limited, and maybe we could go into the sources of funding later. But you know that that's where I think all of the detailed discussion is going to happen. I think it's almost you know as you said, the vote was overwhelming. So you know people are saying to us, you know, the senior center that we have is not meeting the needs of our seniors, but. The big question we have to pose to the residents is, okay, what do you want to trade off um, to meet the needs of our senior citizens? All right. Great. Yeah, I think um, I, I did go to the debrief. Um, so just to learn how everything went um, and sounds like it was a good meeting. So, and I also, they said they sent out that survey. I don't know if that's the same one you were talking about, Kevin. It was like a survey, survey monkey survey to see how the, how it went and asking if they'd like different days and formats and et cetera. Okay. Yeah. I, I asked around a little bit, you know, after the meeting, you know, what, what do you think of the drive-in format? You know, what do you think of the Saturday? You know, a lot of people were, a lot of people like the, like the drive-in format a lot. Um, I know it was a COVID safeguard and maybe there's issues with the cost. Maybe it costs more to run it as a drive-in format, but, and also the mercy of the weather. But I think a lot of people liked how, how we responded to the COVID pandemic. Um, and really like the format. And I think a, a lot of people would want to actually go back to it. Yeah, I think a lot of the, my understanding is a lot of, there was feedback that a lot of people would like to have it on Saturday instead of Tuesday. That's interesting. I I wonder if we, I, I think we don't get the discussion at the drive-in format. And right. you know, particularly if we were doing a school vote in the parking lot, I think that gets tough. And I think it's also possible to run out of space in that parking lot. I don't know if it solves that completely. I don't know how space would have been. Interesting question, but um, so yeah, see what people think. All right. 
Are there any other topics we wanted to discuss as a committee about the STM? So it sounds the Council on Aging was presented as, as non-binding, but I mean, I think it's something that's on everyone's minds. So um, we're going to do our best here to get um, Marianne in to talk to us, hopefully next time when we have um, our meeting, but we'll see how her schedule is. Um, yeah, I just agree. I think that is probably of all the things that we need to talk about go, coming into the um, annual season, uh, that would probably be one of the top priorities because I think that's going to come up again. Um, and I think also I think we should be starting to prepare um, an analysis of the possible funding sources for that. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's something um that's something I think I might like to invite um the the capital committee. So I think it's it would potentially be a capital expense if we're going to build something, but that was something I was going to actually ask you Peter. Do you know if that would be would that be a capital item as well, like a new building or is it more of a initiative? Um, I mean, it certainly would be a capital item. I, I don't know where it falls on the capital planning committee's list. Um, but I think it's actually, I mean, we may want to wait for, I'm sorry, Marianne, I think you said, what's her name, um, yeah. to be here. But I think it's a two-part thing, actually. So one is a more short-term five-year plan at, I I think I assume it's roughly 120,000 a year to rent something to replace the golf course, and then as a longer term thing to build. And even the 120,000 a year, um, you know, is going to prove tricky. So, um, so even, you know, even if we decided we want to build something, it, um, it would be. You know, it's obviously not available for a while, and I think they want to do something quicker than that. Yeah. I also think an important discussion to be had is, do we, you know, is the rent versus build discussion? Because I know, like, my recommendations for this would be very different if we were building a new building versus if we were renting a building off for various factors. But I think that's an important discussion to have as a committee is do we do we endorse a build a new building? Do we endorse renting? Um where on the spectrum do we lie or do we not endorse any of them? I don't think we're here we're in the third camp, but just as to help hold that out as an option as well. Yeah, and I think this is something we'll, we can have a good discussion with Marianne next time um, because she'll she'll have that information. She'll have, you know, an idea of the timelines and the study that's ongoing right now, too, and, and the plans. It sounds like they have um, an action plan. So I don't want to put the, the cart before the horse. Yeah. All right. Um, can I just, I mean, a little bit for Nathan and Linda and – um, just to remind ourselves or, well, I mean, this, would, so we typically, the way Kevin said it, you know, whether we endorse this or that or endorse some plan, um, typically we have not played that role and would not Our, you know, we review issues and, you know, discuss issues in advance of making recommendation on articles of town meeting which is not to say we couldn't play a different role should we so choose, um, but just to kind of highlight our typical role is in reaction to proposals, not particularly advancing one proposal over another, or you're about making the initial recommendation, I guess is how I would say it. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, again, it's not to say we couldn't do that, um, but it is typically – you know, it's not going to come up in the flow of our meetings over the next nine months. Here's where we vote on what we think should be the article for the senior center. And our vote would be on what is the article somebody else put forward. 
So just mentioning that. So yeah. I, I agree with I agree with you, Peter, that we're not we're not in the role of advancing a particular article. But what I do think we should be in the business of is giving the people who are backing a particular movement one way or another early indications of how we would recommend an early guidance of how we would recommend should an article come before town meeting. So they can know like where we stand, what issues we have, and that way they're not blindsided um, when it comes to like a month before town meeting and we have our vote to recommend, our vote to recommend should not be blindsiding um, the backers of various articles. They should have a good understanding well in advance of what we would recommend for and what we would recommend against. Um. Sorry, Jillian, if you, um, I would, I guess, generally agree with that. I, um, let's see, I would agree with the statement. They should not be blindsided by our recommendation and that we should, you know, discuss it and have opinions and, you know, do some deliberation before an actual vote on the article. And that all is public and people should get feedback from that. Um, the one thing I would not want to be in the business of is, like getting giving a pre recommendation on an article that you know they that I don't want people to be, think they can come to FinCom in September and say here's my article I want to go forward with it knowing what your recommendation is going to be and that I think is a weird dynamic that you know not until it gets on the warrant in April are we going to make a recommendation we can discuss our concerns individual members can certainly give their opinion but I don't think we would have a formal vote in any way in advance of April. So I mean, we're if, fully if aligned there. Kind of, okay, perfect. Okay. I don't know what other people think, but or about, you know, maybe doing more policy than just recommendations. Yeah, that actually leads into um, one of my next topics on our agenda. <laughs> so <laughs> Really great segue, um, but I don't know if we want to if we want to go into that. But um, the financial policy manual, or if we want to continue or wrap up what we're currently discussing about. I was wondering if anybody could give me a, a quick summary. Is anybody familiar enough with the current senior center to just fill me in on what's like the recent history of it and like the golf course and how it's currently funded? So I, I can I, do that, but you may want to wait. Uh, or sorry, Jillian, if you want to do it, sorry. I don't. No, no, I was just going to say we we might want to wait just to talk to Marianne about that, and I think she would be very well informed on that uh, topic. I am yeah, sadly not well informed right now, so I, I don't I want mean, to I can, speak. For years, it was a clock tower place in a space that wasn't a great space. Um, clock tower place is Mill and Main in today's parlance um when the town bought the golf course we used the back of the clubhouse for the new senior center which again it was just supposed to be temporary um and that's what they're trying to replace now um and i think that you know the the prior place at the mill i i think was 10 to 15 years old at that point so that that's the brief history. I mean, I, I'd also when we come to that I meeting, I'd also be interested to hear Pete like the history of how how this senior center got tied to this golf course deal. I mean, this is I it's mean the not, golf course is available space. It's okay, just it was available just a, space. We we. We bought when we bought the golf course, we got the clubhouse that came with it, and we looked at the back of that building and said, Hey, you know, this would be better than where they're at now. Um and you know, made the decision to dedicate the back of the golf course house to the senior center. I mean, I, I know you're aware, Pete, but for the um benefits of our newer members, there's also some discussion about 
the community preservation funding and the use of community preservation funding to to pay for that golf course. Um, there's some rumblings from the state about that. Um, no, there's the not. The there is not. There is not. There is a consultant that is advancing an agenda about okay. and trying to get community preservation committees to do stuff like this. There's, uh, there's no reason we need to do anything about it. Um, okay. And I, you know, I, we don't, I don't think we want to do anything about it. So until somebody sues us and makes us, I don't think we want to address this. Okay. So I just want to make you, I mean, this is, this is what's coming across from the, the C, the community preservation committee. Um, I did, this was kind of a, somewhat of a discussion. It's kind of in the background now, but it was an active discussion, yeah. um, prior to special town meeting. Uh, better in but, the background. I, I appreciate your take on it, though, Peter. And I have to go. And I, it wasn't clear if this was consultant driven or if there was anything behind that. I mean, maybe it's just a I, consultant with an agenda. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm learning this space I mean, right now, and yeah, your not, experience I'm, here I'm is. I'm not saying the agenda is bad, but the agenda is to. I don't know, build power for community preservation committees and to fund a very restricted set of open space things with community preservation money, uh, which can be viewed as positive. I, I'm not saying they're on the take or anything, but that's not my view of what the community pr preservation money should be used for. I think we should yeah. have as broad an agenda as we can. It's tax money. Uh, I, I would agree with that assessment as well. That would be my goal as well. I do not think it benefits our town to have those funds be restricted to be have those funds be overly restricted on what we can spend money on what we can spend them on okay but so I, I can I, send some of these questions to Marianne ahead of time so yeah. from my understanding it sounds like the two main questions are we're interested in understanding the rent versus bill discussion and the directions um as she knows them or that they're thinking of um, so we can be informed. And also to the second one would be to ask about the history of the senior center so we can be informed where it's been in the past, how did it end up currently in the golf course? Um, so sort of getting a little bit of background. Were there any other main questions that we might want us, um, that I can send to her ahead of that meeting that we have? Yeah, I'm kind of interested in Senior center or community center? And I don't know if they've done any thinking on that or if that's even Council on Aging's thinking. Uh, I mean, e even their area of thinking. Yeah, it might be outside of their scope, but I can. It might be outside of question. their question. It might yeah. come up in town at some point is senior center or community center. I think that's also an, a very intriguing or uh top relevant topic as well is this going to be is this facility intended to be exclusively for seniors or is this going to be while primarily for seniors open to the general community as well for their use say during the downtime when seniors are not using it Okay, I have recorded these questions uh, and I will forward them to Marianne. So I'll look to schedule her at a future meeting um, and I'll definitely keep the committee open uh, and aware of that. So hopefully, I think, I think our next meeting is November 13th. Does that sound right? Is yes. that the yeah, that's the second Tuesday, Tuesday, a second Monday? The, the next second Tuesday. To Monday. Tuesday? Monday. <laughs> okay. The 13th. Okay. So our next meeting is on the 13th, and then the following would be on the 27th. Is that going to be a problem for people because of Thanksgiving? Are people traveling? Don't know what my Thanksgiving plans are right now. Okay. It shouldn't be an yeah, issue. I'll be here. 
Okay. All right. So I'll see, I'll see if she'll be potentially around on the 13th. Um, for this topic in particular. Okay. Great. Um, are there any other questions or feedback for um, the senior center? Knowing that we're going to have it as an in-depth future topic, um, hopefully at the next meeting. All right, hearing none, uh, I'm going to jump on to our next topic, so future directions. So um, I have two down here, the financial policy manual and also grants. Um, so I'll start with the financial policy manual. So Greg approached me to see if any of us would be interested in updating the financial policy manual. So this is something that was updated in 2020. I'm going to share my screen. So this is, this is also posted on board docs. So I think Bob I'm trying to remember back then was the one that had helped um, last time with this. And it was also a, like a study from UMass Boston, from the Collins Center. Um, and it sort of goes over, it's like generally like guidance about um, about um, like, you know, if we have, you know, certain funds like what what is our policy around them what do they get used for how much should be in them um you know risk management um there's all sorts of things like this in this policy and this is sort of i sort of think about it like the master plan of the town but this is like the financial policy master plan sort of um so Greg sort of reached out to see if we would like to help him update this to um cuz generally they update it every 2 to 5 years does that sound right Peter I think it's, it's like a some kind of cycle like that uh and yeah he... I'm not sure um I thought 20 I'm sure they had financial procedure type things in place they would have had to for the audit but as a as this being a kind of more policy oriented manual i don't think we had this until 2020 okay I maybe we I'm had mixing it. it up i i think we had this before pete because i remember reviewing i remember reading over this um before I joined FinCom, um, before twenty, before the pandemic, uh, when I was before this committee discussing the Green Meadow roof, I remember I had reviewed this, 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 this document extensively. So I know we had it before twenty twenty. I think it had it before we had it in twenty twenty. I think it was like last updated, last update prior to twenty twenty was like two thousand and twelve. I seem to recall vaguely. It was. But uh, but yeah, I do recall reviewing this document, so I do think we had it before 2020. Yeah, so so I mean, this is something that Greg was asking if we if we wanted right. to partner with him to to update this, um, or like if we think there's any sections in particular that could use updating. Um, he doesn't currently have the staff to take on such an update right now, so that's why he's reaching out. Um, I I think the area that needs to be looked at are the um, policies regarding the stabilization funds, um, particularly what is the right size of stabilization funds to maintain. Um, right now, our stabilization funds are... You know, we just approved, town meeting just approved a major expenditure out of the stabilization fund. Um, and that's going to bring our balance um, to a point that I think we need to review and figure out if we need to replenish that fund and what the right size we should be targeting. Uh, but I think that's a question that should involve bond council. Um, 
I mean, this is this is a question that's going to involve, I think, to to get the right answer to this, like what is the right size of stabilization funds? I think this is going to require the input of experts, particularly bond council, um, in terms of like because the balance of stabilization funds affects uh, the bond rating that we receive. And with these major bonds coming up, I think it's critical that we look to see what we could do to maintain our bond rating or even increase our bond rating beyond what we have already. Well, and the page you're on now talks about creating a financial policy review working group. And I wonder if that's what we could recommend to, to the administrator. So there would be a representative yeah. from Selectman from a representative from us, capital planning and staff. Um Yep, and that's where I got that every five years or yeah. earlier if necessary. I mean, just briefly, there's one goal that's set that we should at least be looked at because they set a goal for FY23 and we're already beyond that. Um, so we should, as like Kevin said, we should review that, see if we met the goal that they had set and then establish a, a new goal. So it looks like it's important to do, but this is this requires some expertise and some, yeah. and some help on this, as Kevin, as you mentioned, right? Yeah, I think I think to be a for for this for that review committee to be effective, uh, I think a hundred percent we need bond council involved in this discussion. Um, I think, you know, if you know, I <laughs> I could give I could give my hardest shot at it, and I'd be willing to chip in. Um, but when it comes to right sizing the stabilization funds. Um, the only facts that I have right now is that the returns on those funds are less than the rate of inflation. So, um, you know, it's it's like, you know, financially, like if you're investing in something sub inflation, it's probably not something to be overly invested in. At the same time, it does have an impact on our bond rating, but I do not know what that impact is, um, nor do I really have a, you know, or is this something that's like documented, like this is only something that someone who's gone through hundreds of bond issuances can can understand and that's interacting with the with the rating agencies on a regular basis can really understand. So I think the involvement of bond council, bond council would be essential to this process. Okay. That's great feedback. I think I saw someone's hand raised, but um, it's hard for me to tell when I present. Uh, Natasha's Natasha's fun. Yep. Uh, hi. Yes. I just wanted to, um, these were only approved in mid to late 2020. The draft ones were circulated by Greg in July of 2020 for the budget town budget subcommittee meeting. Um, so I would wonder if, since these are very new ish and we had COVID and policies, usually you don't want to redo or re rewrite your policies every three years for finances. Um, unless there's a, a major, it's not a best practice, um, unless there's something that's not working, I'd want to maybe understand a little bit more about what targeted aspects are looking to be rewritten since they actually are relatively new. And I'm not sure if they've been followed or attempted to be followed with some level of fidelity. We kind of invoke them periodically, but I've yet to hear how how they're being utilized in a way to ensure that whatever update is needed is, is going to be beneficial and effective. Right. I mean, part of the policy was that we would have five-year planning, which to my knowledge, doesn't really exist. Um, I think there's there's a that's always been a goal, but I'm just not yeah. sure how solid that is. Um, so for me, that would be one thing to just revisit about how far the planning goes out. Um, I would maybe wonder if there's because they, you can get from nuts to bolts, you can kind of get lost in like every aspect of this. It almost would make mm -hmm. sense maybe to kind of focus in on a narrow, narrowly, what are like the three or four that are most critical needing to be updated? Um, 
because you can pick words and redo them forever. I mean, it's, but that's not really, I think a best use of everyone's time. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. I would echo what Natasha said. This is a pretty new document to be undergoing a review. Um, second, I mean, I think the idea of doing this should be on a list of, um, I don't see it on the agenda for tonight, but, you know, some idea of our, what we want to accomplish for the year. And for me, this would not be very high up on that list. So, yep. you know, this comes in the, you know, face of, you know, again, I, I have little hope for the grant discussion, but, you know, that to me would be more positive than this. Um, I know we talked about trash. Um, I know, you know, the idea of, of doing the five-year planning, I still think is something I would like to pursue and I would have a whole yep. lot higher than reviewing this manual. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see how this rises to the level for us for this year. I mean, maybe in another year or two, maybe we should be looking at this more closely and not even attempting a review, but deciding, you know, what we like, what we don't like, you know, for future. But right. Um, and I think since we have so many members, that would be a really good point too, because I haven't read this in a long time. So, um, and some I'm of the, sorry, some just of the, to, did you mean so many new members or you said so many members? New members. Yep. Okay, did I, sorry, did I, I miss I a word? I might've cut out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think this is meant to be guiding, but you know, I, I agree with you too. So I didn't mean to cut you off though. I mean, I, I agree mostly, but where I'm coming from is that I foresee for annual town meeting, our town being faced with the question of, do we allocate funds into the stabilization account or do we allocate funds to um, accommodate a, a level service budget because we're going to probably be faced with a significant increase in cost? Or do we allocate funds to the senior center? But I do believe that the stabilization funds are going to be competing with other budget line items that are of importance to the town um, for funding. And before I go into that decision, I, I do think we should be as informed as possible of what the right size is for the stabilization. I agree mostly with like language and tweaking language, but I think for that number that like the stabilization account needs to be this percent of our budget, I think that number um, needs to be revisited and looked at heavily because I think that's going to impact the discussion we're going to have at annual town meeting. Jalen, can I just yeah, I, add just I want to something there. Just I mean, I deal with financial policies at my my work, and I will tell you that one, they're not going to be all encompassing at every scenario. You know, you're not going to be. They're basically a guide of best practices and ensuring that you're compliant. But beyond that, you know what you're asking, Kevin. That's a very uh, situational kind of aspect that the the policies aren't going to always give the best direction or tell you what to do. They might say, this is generally what we do, but it's always within the municipality to say, where do we push the envelope within best practice for us in that moment? So I think there's a, they're a guide, but they're not intended to ever be uh, answer all scenario questions unless they are informing you know compliance with an MGL or something to that effect. But Ultimately, all of it's really just best practices beyond that of what, you know, to be sustainable. Um, and you can get lost very easy in those type of details when it comes to people wanting to craft what they view as important in certain areas if it's not founded in a compliance aspect. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm coming at this as well, Natasha, because I mean, this, this, I, I've personally had had the town come back. I've had the town come back and reference this financial policy manual 
when it came to the spending of funds. So it does get our town does refer to it, um, particularly when it's like stabilization accounts and when stabilization accounts are competing with other other spending priorities. Um, this does get referenced. Uh, so I want to make sure that when we have the discussion, we have particularly for that stabilization, we have as much information presented to us. And maybe this is maybe this financial policy manual is just the exercise we go through just to get at the information. But I think it's very important that we have as much information as possible regarding what the impact our stabilization accounts balances will have on the rest of our town finances. Um, but Kevin, what, what you're speaking about, which is an important distinction, is that it's when they are used, right? So if yeah. we're not, they're here. If we're not using them consistently, then that's shame on us because they exist. So that means that instead of us redoing, we probably should think, how do you, how do we take what we have and bring it to life to ensure that our decisions are referencing the policies on a more consistent basis, if that's what it is, as opposed to cherry picking when we want to abide by the policies. Yes, I, I certainly would not want us to be cherry picking by the policies. Um, I think, you know, people, there's a tendency in this town to, um, again, my, my prior experience is that when we referred back to the stabilization account balances, I don't think I, it was, this was back when the financially policy manual was almost eight years old. I thought that number was a little bit out of date. Um, I think, you know, trying to do better, I'm trying to make sure that if we're going to be, if we're going to be treating this like the Bible, when it comes to funding requests, and we're going to be referring to the stabilization account percentage, and we need to hit this percentage, um, that that number is accurate and reflective of the current financial situation in the town, not the situation it was 10 years ago when we had the consultants in to do that. I'm I'm sorry this this document I'm I'm trying to find it on board docs and having a little trouble. Um, uh, Joe, would you mind like just forwarding that to all of us? I uh, yeah I can um let's see. So, uh, if I'm just gonna stop sharing and I'll I'll share board docs instead. But... Nathan, I found it on board docs, and you go into the agenda. And you click on the financial planning. Yeah, there it is. Yep. So I don't know if you can. If you Sorry, can see. Me... So okay. If you're on, why if you're why on... don't I have the agenda tab? Okay. So if I you're I ran meeting, this before. Do right? I need to log in or something? Nope, I'm not logged in. So see how you click right here, view the agenda. Uh, um, the time. trick may be in the upper right someplace. You have to select FinCom. Yeah, I, ha I have FinCom case, selected. You have to select you have to select it twice sometimes to get to our see how it's up problem. here. It says finance committee. Yeah. And then you select it. And then October 23rd finance committee meeting. Okay. So agenda. Okay. Okay. So it shows up if you have a specific meeting selected. Yep. So you pick today. Okay. And then it's under future directions. Yeah, so you click view agenda and then it's under future okay. directions. Then you click on financial policy manual and then you click this link and that'll bring you to the PDF. It was too big. That... It wouldn't let me actually put it on there. Yeah, so I, I so that's cool that that's part of the, the attachment because that was part of the agenda. But it, does it live in a specific place um, where I could find it like aside from on our agenda for this meeting? Yeah, if you're well, on the Town of Maynard link. website, yeah. this link. you click the link, this opens the actual document. <laughs> and then yeah. you can download it from there if you want. I just did. <laughs> yeah, so this is on the Town of Maynard website. So if you're on the Town of Maynard website as well and you type in financial policy, it comes up. I think it's on the board of select, the select board um, website, potentially, Got is it. where this link lives. Because they cool. have a link to all the policy, the town policies there on their website. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. Um, all right. Great.
Okay, so um, awesome. So what what I'm hearing is that we are um, so for Greg that we're pretend we're probably not interested in doing that this year, um, but could potentially think about making it a priority in a future year. Um, but we would recommend for Greg that if for a proper and a full review to make a working group, like it says in the actual document, so that there will also be inclusion of experts such as bond, bond council and other um, committees. Um, and it would good, it'd be good for us, I think, potentially maybe just to look over this document and see uh, in the manual what goals were set in 2020 for this manual and where are we falling short and maybe highlight a couple that we think could potentially be key. So, you know, for me, one of them was that five-year planning process, which is outlined in this manual, which I think is important for Kevin. It sounded like some of the potential ones that are of interest are around the... Um, the, the the number or the ratio of amount of money that's in some of these capital stabilization funds. Um, are there any other highlights that I potentially miss that to convey to Greg? No. Okay. Now it looks to me, Julian, like it's very useful in terms of setting target dates for capital capital planning for budget planning to see if we're really on target for those dates. I mean, that's, I thought that was really interesting just in my brief review of it. Um, sort of give us some, met, our, ourselves some metrics and some help with, you know, setting the calendar and goals for the year when we should be doing some things. Yep. Okay. Is there any, uh, further discussion on the financial policy manual topic? All right. I am not hearing any. Uh, so I'm going to move on briefly to grant discussions. Um, so I would say this is more of an informal topic. Um, so this is something that I attended an MM. I think it's called MMA. It's like Massachusetts Municip Municipal Association. It's a hard word to say today. Um, so I attended one of their seminars about how towns can apply for grants and to try to get grant funding to get additional funding resources into the town. Um, so I think it's important to, to know that applying for a grant um, doesn't always mean you'll get it. Uh, if you do get it, there is more work to be done once you get the money. So there is also the process of showing um, the funding source, like, you know, the state or if it's a state or a federal grant, that you have carried out what you said you would do in the grant um, to make sure that you don't have to pay the money back because you did not fulfill your end of the obligation. So there's also things you have to do after the grant is awarded. Um and, you know, I did talk briefly with Greg, if that's something that could potentially be helpful. Um, if we, it's not, I don't know that it's, and this is something I kind of wanted to also bring up to the committee for feedback, um, potentially Peter understanding where I could look up if this is something we would even be doing is helping with grant applications or identifying sources that we might recommend the town to apply for. I don't know if that's really our place. Um, but I feel like, you know, if we could potentially help the town get more money, that might be a positive thing. Um, but, you know, I used to do science grants and I know that it's only like you only win like three to five percent of those that you apply for. So um, also making sure it would be worth effort. But I feel like we have a very good capital planning system in place potentially. And there's like a list of priorities. Um, that sort of follow the the town master plan and otherwise. So I don't know, you know, our capital grants something that we could help with or basically I wanted to sort of understand how the committee felt about the grant process. And I think the so main I, thing is that um, we would have to have town buy-in because it's not just applying for a grant. 
because the town would have to maintain and otherwise report back on the grant too. So. Yeah, again, I mean, from my point of view, um, I think this, you know, falls onto a list of what do we want to spend time on this year? And maybe this is one of the things. Um, I'm not sure this works very well as a committee type thing. Um, I mean, meeting twice a month is tough to keep up with the deadlines and that kind of thing. If a member wanted to really work on this, I would lend support to that. But I think it, you know, more likely is going to be, you know, an individual member, you know, really getting into this and wanting to do something. And, you know, that would be fine if such a member exists. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things we could do for education and then, you know, let Greg or the select board decide if they want to apply, if, you know, we find opportunities. Um, I hesitate to think that we would take on a compliance role, you know, so when it comes to the actual grant reporting, I think Greg would be nervous about having that assigned to a volunteer committee. Um, you know, not to say, you know, if somebody took it on and, you know, was consistently doing it for five years, that opinion might change, but that's the kind of commitment it would take to right. you know, have FITCOM actively participate like that. Um, yeah, and to be clear, it was more helping with the application process and ha making sure we had a partner on the town side, because I'm not sure that they are comfortable having a volunteer committee do that part, which I think is, is probably appropriate not to, I agree with you is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure Greg is worried we're going to get some, you know, whack ball $30,000 grant that all of a sudden has 50000 in town matching funds required, and, you know, it's going to be, we don't want it. So, you know, the, to the degree that I think there is new stuff happening with the Inflation Reduction Act um, and some national infrastructure money that, you know, it might make sense that we could come up with something, but you'd have to presuppose that we're going to have better information than Justin. And, you know, they have a whole trade group geared towards trying to get money from those grants. So... I'm not sure we would have better information than Justin. Um, so uh, some, some, my initial thoughts, sorry. But or, so, uh, I think this, I think this, while well, a valiant effort falls outside the scope of this committee, but what I would like to see is um, making it very explicit and clear that finance member committees, uh, members are able to participate in this activity. Because I know one well, of the big things is that we're generally precluded from most town activities with certain exclusions. So if we can get a determination that, yes, we could participate, I would love to lend a hand here. But I do think as a finance committee, our role is not, as been said before, our role is not to advance a particular cause, but to make recommendations on causes that are brought to us in addition to the compliance function. So on the compliance, I think, you know, Greg is the chief compliance officer. Um, we are the we are the separation of powers. So we review Greg's actions to make sure he's in compliance with the grants. Um, but I think that's the only role that we have as a committee is to outside of, you know, reviewing proposal outside of making recommendations based upon grant proposals brought to town meeting and reviewing the compliance aspects and the actions of the chief compliance officer. Other than that, I think we need clearance to participate out in this outside of the scope of, of the finance committee, but under our own personal auspices as volunteers. Um, in response to what Pete said, I, I do agree wholeheartedly that um, town officials by far are more knowledgeable in this area. Um, but what I think they need is that they, they do not have the manpower um, to just pursue all of the activities they would like. And I think they have a manpower shortage. And so I think what they're asking for is to for us to volunteer and lend a hand on that manpower shortage. Thank you. Do you have a comment, Linda? Are you frozen? I do. I'm I'm um I'm I'm off mute. Okay. 
Yep, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let me lower my hand. So I'm jumping ahead a little, but I attend. I'm the liaison to the Economic Development Committee, and I think this is the second or third time I've met with them, and they are always talking about grants. Um, so, for instance, at this meeting that I just attended last Wednesday, they had a representative there from Mass Development, which is the state agency involved that that provides assistance to towns in terms of economic development. And that representative talked about a lot of different grant programs. And it looks like the town, there was town staff there from the planning department, conservation department. They were well hooked in with a lot of grant opportunities. They mentioned Brown uh, doing cleanup, getting assistance with brownfields, um, clean energy, oftentimes the town working in partnership with you know, maybe a, a developer or or a business. They mentioned a lot, which I think will be interesting for us as they're developing powder mill. They mentioned a lot of tax advantage grants and programs um, where they're basically will be building infrastructure, sort of borrowing against future tax assessments. They mentioned someone had just gotten a $50,000 grant for marketing the downtown. The Cultural Council was, of course, giving grants, but also getting grants that the uh, Cultural District and the Cultural Council. So it looks like there was actually the town, I mean, I was very impressed by our town employees working with, you know, the businesses on a variety of funding opportunities. So I think it would, I learned a lot. And as we move forward with development, like especially some of these tax incentive grant programs, um, seem a little tricky because you're borrowing against tax revenue, but um, it was, it was you know, really, really interesting and a very active group, again, trying to develop Maynard, get, grow the tax base, um, but also looking for grants. Also a regular attendee is Representative Hogan, as one of the staff persons from Representative Hogan's office, and they've been very active at getting grants state earmarks, keeping us in the loop for some big um, grant funding from, from state government. So it's very impressive in, in that way. That sounds great. Thanks for sharing that, that information. Yeah, it's a, it's a very active, um, you know, very interesting group with town employees, some local business owners, um, some real estate brokers who, of course, are trying to get interest in Maynard, um, you know, playing to all the strengths of Maynard, of real estate culture, um, small businesses. So um, I think they were going to get a grant for another shared bike program. So there, there's all that word grant. And that theme is constantly coming up for innovative programs to trying to leverage some extra funding that's not in our, say, regular budget. All right, great. Well, I think I will, um, I'm gonna reach out to Greg and sort of bring some of this back to and um, just double check and see if as individuals, we would be allowed to assist or inquire on this process um, and still also be serving on this committee. So um, I'll get back and um, perhaps when we have Justin come to a future town, uh, future uh, FinCom meeting to talk about the trash, we can also potentially ask about um, some of his experiences because I do believe that they they uh, he is involved in a lot of the, these types of grants as well. Um, but I do definitely agree with you all that uh, I don't think we necessarily need to go and seek out these grants. I think the town and other people in the town are very great at bringing these opportunities forward. It's a matter of um, the ability to, or the having the, the power to fill these out, just not having enough hands. Um, great. Yeah. So in this sort of comes back to what Peter was saying about talking about what our priorities might be for the upcoming year. Um, th this this year is almost over. It is still continuing the fiscal year, 
because as everyone knows, the fiscal year resets uh, in the summer. Um, so, and that sort of leads into our next, one of our next discussions, uh, unless there's any further discussion on grants. All right, I'm not hearing any. So, um, so I think our next topic is about the budget. Um, so uh, I think in order for us to have a better sense of the projected revenues for FY25, um, and I believe that the budget subcommittee coming up has also been rescheduled um, to October 30th. So um, I think this is a topic that um, we'll probably talk as a group about after that meeting. Um, but I think this is this is something that's coming up on the horizon that we should start thinking about is as they're projecting out the FY25 budget, uh, can we also think about, you know, 26, 27, 28, 29? I don't, you know, are we going to try to see if we can start thinking about the next five years out? How far out do we think we can do some um, accurate planning? I know it, it gets a little less accurate but at least thinking about the next two or three years, I think would be very beneficial. Um, so that's that's something I hope to invite uh, Greg to one of our future meetings to give us a bit of an update on. I don't know if there's any Do more. Do we have any sense of the budget? I was, I was looking for the financial mm -hmm. reports and, and there was none yet for September, which was a little concerning because the August one for town expenditures was posted on September 5th. And for September, there we're practically at the end of November and it still wasn't there. Do we know how even FY24 is going? Do you have a sense? I think that's a great question. I... don't have any of those documents. I haven't seen those documents updated in a while, so that's good to call out. Yeah, that was concerning and I I just um it just that was an a little alert that um the prior ones were very timely and this one I I certainly couldn't find it. Yeah, I think they were transitioning over to the ClearGov or on the website. Um, so I'll see. We Maybe it's also be able else. to get updates. Maybe yeah. It's okay. Peter, you haven't gotten any of those, right? Or know if they've moved to ClearGov. Nope. I, I know we were talking about that, but I, I didn't hear anything. Okay. All right. And, and that's something I also wanted to touch base with. And I know, I feel like as a committee, we've sort of gone back and forth on this with some members have certain strong opinions one way or the other for our future planning. Um, I know in the past people, some some people on the committee have had strong opinions that we should try to plan for five years. Um, others have been a little more um, planning for like three years or two years. Um, do we have a strong sense of a, as a committee? I feel like we have a couple new members um, or maybe if you, what kind of information you would need if you, you would like to make that a priority, this this type of future planning, or maybe it's something that you haven't thought about. So I think Peter, you were talking about how you're pretty. You would like to potentially think about five year plannings. Yeah, I, I'm um, a little more maybe on the three year side, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I guess five I'm not wedded to a particular number of years. Okay. Um, more about more than one. I'm more about saying more than one year. Yep. Um, so three years would be fine. Um, although, yeah, it'd be, I mean, if we could do it, then you would be easier to extend it should we decide we want that. Um.
Yeah, I think where we were trying to get to before, you know, kind of pre-COVID, and we're kind of starting to get there, I thought, was to come up with a model for a financial plan that would be, you know, the tensions are um, simplicity versus, uh, well, I don't know, ease of use versus accuracy, maybe. Um, so, you know, how much detail do we really want in there? And then the more detail you have, the harder it is to maintain the plan. Um, so I thought we had come cl pretty close to settling on a fairly simple model. And then the other piece was we wanted something that, you know, people beyond FinCom would use. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, with that in mind, we were trying to mimic the format that the town already uses so that it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't then be this extra thing we have to ask for, oh, can you present it in this other format? So the kind of standard um, budget model that Greg, you know, starts circulating is what we settled on. And then, you know, again, we were hoping it would become, I don't know, institutionalized enough that, you know, the select board would, you know, ask Greg to produce it. Um, and that, you know, town staff would have a large role in maintaining it. I don't think that's happened. I'm not sure the town financial staff is in a position right now. So we'll have to see how the year goes. I, you know, at this point, I think our best chance to actually get a plan together is to do it ourselves internally. Um, and, you know, that's something I'm willing to play with to some degree and, you know, can show the committee what I get. Um, or if somebody else wants to be part of it, that's fine. It is a fairly simple Excel spreadsheet. Um, but I, I, that would be my brief summary of where I think we're at with this. Um, that, you know, we don't have really institutional buy-in yet that, um, you know, other boards are asking for this information, which would be the ideal. So, I do have some updates on this front. I believe I updated this committee prior to special town meeting. I think I got put on the back burner a little bit, but um, so from what I've seen um, liaisoning with the capital planning committee is that Greg is moving forward with ClearGov um, as a budgeting tool. And I also believe that ClearGov has that projection ability to plan X amount of years in the future. Um, so the based on my interactions with the Capital Planning Committee, they are enthusiastic about ClearGov um, and they're asking to use ClearGov and there seems to be movement um, from Greg on that. Um, as an example, the fire station um, sale was heavily documented in ClearGov. In fact, there was a URL um, that you could access to go look at all the project documentation for the fire sale, re, uh, fire station resale or re, reuse. Um, and yeah, so from all indications, I see that like Greg and the executive branch are moving forward with ClearGov. Um, I would think that now that we're clear of special town meeting, I would ask. Uh, I think, you know, we, we put together this Excel spreadsheet, which is fantastic, but I think this this Excel spreadsheet may, it may be far easier to leverage ClearGov if we're paying for it um, than to try to maintain the Excel spreadsheet. But I think we would need Greg's involvement in that. And I would suggest that we reach out to Greg and inquire again about what's going on with ClearGov and if we can be included on that software. Yeah, I agree. I'm I looked at I'm looking at the ClearGov page right now, but I don't see I'm not sure. I'm not as familiar with this software uh or this website. Maybe you have to sign in to be able to see it. But um I can only see 2021 and in the past, I think up to 2014. 
So you can see this is, I don't know how to make it smaller. Yep. But that's so, yeah. all I see. It's concerning that it's so far behind. It's two years behind. Yeah, wow. and I think that was in the major budget categories are slightly different than the spreadsheets we use internally or the reports we get every month. So that's yes. also something to consider. I think there's two pieces to this, though. Um, I think what you're looking at, Jillian, is ClearGov's presentation of state data on town spending. Um, there's a, I think, a separate thing that is more about the immediate day-to-day -day spending. And, you know, I, I'm not very familiar with this either, but yeah. I think there are other aspects that, yeah, I don't know why it's only up through 2021. That is weird. So I can, I can um, comment a little bit on this. Um, what you're looking at right now is like the ClearGov transparency portal um, that presents data to the general public. In addition, they now have a budgeting tool um, that I believe the Capital Planning Committee, at least I saw them using it, uh, and town staff have access to. So I, what I think we need to do is we need to ask Greg if we could get on into, so it's probably a cloud portal. You probably have to sign in um, to get it. But I would, I would actually even ask Greg to come and present to us ClearGov, and I think that would probably should be one of the top priorities for us uh, this coming year is to get onboarded onto ClearGov. If that's what all indications say is that that's the direction Greg is going in. Um, but I think it's essential that if that's the direction Greg is going in, that we get on board with that too. Um, so that we can participate in the budgeting and projection process. Natasha, do you have a comment? Yes, I just wanted to, um, this comes up every once in a while. I think it's that um, forecasting model module that Greg was using with other departments, the school department would not be able to use that. So I just want to be clear on where the effectiveness on this, because the way we have to budget are different when it comes to costings and lines and whatnot. So, you know, at a very high level, we're saying that potentially 50% 50 50 of the budget is not going to be using that model. So just for whatever whatever that means for, for everyone. I just want to make sure that that's just clear and it's not going to be comprehensive for the whole town budget um, because the school department would just be one line item until the budget's approved. Um, can, I, can I interact with Natasha for a second, Ma uh, Madam Chair? Yeah, I was going to ask a follow up. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. So Natasha, has the school committee heard anything about ClearGov or has been briefed on ClearGov at all? It came up last year, um, in our budget meetings that we had, and this was a point that was just brought up that, um, because the way the school budgets and the different way that Desi has you know, requires costings and all that, they don't align with exactly how the town budgets. So it's just a different way. We wouldn't, um, you know, the way our process also is, is the superintendent comes to us with a budget in December, you know, and, and then we approve for total amount what we're going forward. But between then and later on, there's a lot of different potential changes that could happen. Um, so there's that, that line by line that maybe other departments and Greg might be using for other departments that it's a different, a different way. Um, so I just wanted to. So, yeah, so, I mean, this is, this is from what I've, what limited amount of information I have and what limited information I've seen. I, I do see Greg moving to ClearGov, but I think we should have Greg come in and speak to that. And I think, Jillian, that would probably be a request. Um, I I think I strongly think that we should request 
uh, Greg to come in and give us a roadmap of what the budgeting process is going to be. And if indeed he is, if indeed he is moving to ClearGov and what is the plan for ClearGov? And if we are moving to ClearGov, can we get onboarded onto that? I think that that is a key conversation we need to have with Greg. Um, I don't know if the school committee has heard anything. Apparently they, they have not, correct me if I'm wrong, Natasha, but I think we're still in the, from the looks of it, we're still in the early stages, but I would like to hear from the horses, from our town administrator's mouth, like exactly what is the plan for our budgeting process going forward. Um, and I think if he indeed is moving to clear gov, I would applaud that action as well. I think that is a very positive step for our town. If indeed he's doing so. Jillian, did you have a follow up for me? I just wanted to. Oh uh, no, we're all set, Natasha. Thank you for asking. I was just curious if you heard anything or if you had any additional information you could provide um, more recent than that year, than last year, because I think there's been some change between the last year and this year, and I'm trying to trying to figure out what's going on. I, I, you know, I've seen hints of it, but I haven't heard heard anything definitive yet about you know moving to ClearGov. So I think the 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 answer to all my questions is that we need to get Greg in to talk to this. And um, I think we need to ask him for ask the, the finance committee needs to ask him for access. Yep. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I did have, um, I just want to understand. So um, a little bit more. So I know. So from my understanding, you were saying that this is not potentially a useful planning tool for you because it only liked has the school as being one like line item, not necessarily all the different pieces that are important for your budget. Is that, is my understanding correct? Not, not exactly. So our allocation of the line by line comes later on. Okay. We, we look at, you know, as far as all that, like we have our budget hearing that happens, you know, in, in March and, and, and whatnot, the way that Greg does his forecasting i think with departments is they have to enter all that in like in october november ahead mm -hmm. of time and so from us we you know we have our own we have to approve it we have hearings and whatnot and our timeline for one doesn't really sync up but also the line by line costing accounts aren't also the same so we you know we we adhere more to how desi requires certain reporting which doesn't always match to what the town might have in their accounts and i know this is an issue just every month wayne has to get you know the reports from the town because they do their own reconciling and it is kind of a can be a more of a manual process than than not with um doing that because they're not like apple to apple with this line is that and how and how they're reported and how we need to maintain the budget from a school perspective Okay. Thanks for sharing that insight. Does it that might be that like, be... hey, it's just a dollar, like a flat dollar. And then at least you're like, you know, that could be what you plan around, but it mm -hmm. might not be the detailed level of, you know, everything else in there. So I, I don't know, but it, I haven't heard any recent conversations about it. Okay. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think understanding the details is important. Um, I think for me, the the high level view having that just as a stepping stone, I think would be really great. Um, or at least under, and I think, you know, um, Bob, who used to be on the committee, did a nice, nice um, review of sort of understanding what had happened in the past and trying to predict what the future might look like. And then COVID came in and just <laughs> threw a wrench in everything. Um, you guys had this wonderful Excel. I mean, I, I hate to go to the basics, but there was just that Excel sheet that he had where you could kind of plug in, you know. Yeah, I made all the pivot tables for him in that Excel spreadsheet. I know. <laughs> I honestly was kind of a fan of, of some version of that because I think it was, right now we have nothing. and <laughs> We had right. that. And I just, I really yeah. would have liked to see that kind of, I see Mike, I like Mike, I see your face here, which is cool, kind of cool here. Um, but I, I know that that would have been great to see some version of that come to fruition as well. Yeah, right now we don't have good to see you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we. Hi, Mike. Yeah, so we had we still are maintaining that spreadsheet of yours, Mike. I know you you had it 
um, you had contributed some part to it, and then it was taken over by Bob McCarthy, and now we're, you know, it's kind of being taken over by FinCom, although it's been a couple months since we've looked at it. I mean, that spreadsheet's still around; it just needs to be updated. So mm. I, I'm, I'm certainly not a not of a negative opinion of it. I think it's a fantastic tool. I just think that um, if ClearGov is an option, I think ClearGov may be an easier thing to maintain. Um, right. Than the I, don't, I don't want to make any extra work for anyone. And I know we also yeah. had a nice study done, um, I think by the Collins Center where they made a different spreadsheet. Um, so, um, or, or some kind of a different tool to do some they, kind of exactly they, they, theirs was like super comprehensive it's like i think almost monstrosity of how to maintain like the historical piece and right. then but you guys had a more right. a, you know a, a, a kind of i thought a better use more useful tool that people could use um that wasn't as exhaustive kind of like a hybrid version you know like it was a forecasting but not to that detail the collins one was a lot to maintain. I think that was part of it. It's very manual. Yeah. Well, the one that was created also had two more parts to it, which no one ever looked at. It had a five year where you could project revenue by the category yeah. about five years, and it broke up expenses by department and, and it broke up the school into a different type of category on expenses. And what it did is it linked into that spreadsheet that you're talking about. So the total after it was created, total amount of time to update it and, and keep it updated when I did it, what max time, two hours. Uh, That's all you... it took. Once you create it and you keep it updated and you do the department and the revenue piece, which you can update from time to time because it would automatically update, it should take if you know what you're doing. It takes about two hours. Worst worst case, it would take you a day if you didn't know what you were doing. But I could do it in in two hours. I mean, it was the revenue piece and the expense piece. You're hired. Are you volunteering again, Mike? I know. Do you want to get back in the game? Do you want to get back um, in the I game? Will make I no think no comment at this point. The answer is yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make no other uh, further but, comment than that right now. I mean, if you have that original spreadsheet, I'm I I'd certain I you know speaking on personal, I'd, I'd love I to take a look at it. Perhaps if if we it got lost in translation somewhere, and that there's an original that has there not is. been like there is there always has been. Okay, I, I'll talk, I can talk to Kevin, and he, he he can probably pick you know get it, and then probably I'll tell him you know. You can look at it, and then it's easier to update. Yeah. Because so, what it did on the expense side, you could literally, instead of just doing, you know, by function, like 2%, 3%, you could literally go by department, because some departments would have no increases, and you could do salaries and expenses, and you could do it by year. And I had a thing, uh, not like a macro, but in the right-hand side, where you could put the percentage in, and it would automatically go through and do everything. That's what I said. I mean, I created it. But, and you know, it was never, no one ever asked about it. And no one sort of cared after I left. So. <laughs> well, it, it's come back. It's like, um, what it was, it's like, uh, like some of those classic movies. They're now back in, they're now yeah. back in fashion after being forgotten. No, um, I think it's like a, Kevin gave it to me. I could probably update it and make it current and stuff like that. And the beauty of it too, what it did is it had not just the budget and projection, but it had historically, if you go we go to the left of it, once a year is done, you could you would have columns that had actual and budget and the two, and you could always hide them and do whatever you want with it. So it always had actuals and budgets in there too from prior years. It was it was quite yeah. simple to do. It was elaborate to make, but very simple. As uh, Natasha said, it was very simple to use. And uh, Bob so, used to update it all the time because, and I, I think Jillian, you did a lot of stuff with it, right? That's correct. Yeah. So I mean, if Bob couldn't figure difficult. it out. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't difficult. You know, the only piece that you no know one ever had seen is you know I broke it up into expenses and revenue especially the detail by the different categories, <clears throat> which is probably more important than the expense piece because it was, you know, you could 
now the way with things going, like for instance, you know, last year your interest was 25, revenue was 25,000 and this year it's like 300,000. So it was, you know, it, it was easier to, to put in and project based upon, you know, stuff. I mean, during COVID, it wasn't very difficult. It was probably made it, you know, when we did it, when Cheryl was there, we were able to do it under with COVID very easily, you know, make corrections to it based upon COVID, you know? I mean, you know, everybody was running around thinking we were going to be zillions of dollars in the hole. And we ended up being actually very much to the, you know, to the good on that, you know, because we were able to, you know, do things with it based upon what the environment was. But, you know, I'm probably saying things right now that if, you know, out of, out of line based upon what I'm saying, but I'm only giving you history of what I did and what was exists. But I could talk to Kevin and see if he still has it and he could send it to you and you can just do what you want with it. I think but we'll, that was, we'll, we should... you know, it had the actuals and the history in it too. So, you know, it, it was less complicated than the one that the guy did and less complicated and you'll get in other things which you didn't really want but it was very simple you know to keep an update once you once you i mean once you created it and you kept up kept it up jillian will tell you it was set i mean she could play you know we changed the numbers from week to week and month yep. to month and it was very easy you know she would change it and then create things with it it, it wasn't difficult to you know to to maintain it's not mm -hmm. That was it what. Like it has some, oh, huh? excuse me. It sounds like it has some really good metrics that we might want to keep our eye on. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, the nice thing about it too was, you know, there were certain things that you know you, you would want to look at, like especially when you do the budget, you know, and you do a town meeting and you do like the line that says um, employee benefits. You know, you're looking at. 8% for everything when if you went into the expense piece, you didn't have to do that. You could go to Medicare and say, I want that to be 3%. You can go to life insurance and say, I want it to be zero in percent. So basically the only thing you really, so you're not increasing, you know, everything more than it should be. And it was, it got, it was a lot more accurate in terms of at least on the expense side, because, you know, you, you didn't automatically increase everything with a percentage. You know, you could literally go in buy, you know, expenses, you know, uh, salaries, expenses, and do it that way. And, and uh, you know, the revenue is not that difficult, but it was, you know, it was always because you can't do averages. Averages make no sense whatsoever. And no one ever uses averages, no matter, you know. Um, and basic, so on the revenue side, it was the kind of thing, you know, uh, it was really simple categories. You know, there was what, 15 categories? That was it. So you go to, to, you can update it and you didn't have to go and, you know, say, well, I wanted, you know, about permits and stuff because that you could, you could, if you wanted more detail, then you could always go to the person who created it and say, hey, you know, what makes up this number? You know, how many permits? But that was the beauty of it when I said there was a history because, you know, you, especially on the revenue side, you want to be able to look at your history because you can't always, use the numbers that are there like a perfect example is permits you could have permits and then when you did uh was it uh digital crossing and all that stuff you had big a lot of your revenue with permits but that sort of made it look you know you Throwing know more up. than it should be, you know so it's kind of it allowed you to take into consideration the environment as it existed and that was why how i why i created that one yeah. because that one was and it was that one's simple I mean, it's like what, 12, 13 lines. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, what we struggled with late last physical year, fiscal year was, um, I mean, getting buy-in. So, I mean, before like special town meeting took over everything, we were trying to align with the executive branch on the tool to use. Right. Um, and, you know, the spreadsheet's great, and it'd probably be a great tool for us, but we have to convince the executive branch to use it. So I think it's critical that we hear, you know, what's the plan for the executive branch? What yeah. tool are they using? And then have, hey, have Mike's spreadsheet out there 
as an option if they don't if they don't have a plan on the executive branch um you know then then we could definitely float you know the that spreadsheet as an option for everyone to use but i think you know part of the constraint we have to work with is we have to be a team player on this um with the executive yeah. branch yeah and we yeah, have problem, to you, yeah go ahead no i mean the problem you have to do with revenue is you can't use averages doesn't make sense absolutely doesn't make sense because if you start using averages and say we're going to increase it by two percent every year or say last year i had permits of five hundred thousand, but you know for instance that there's a hundred thousand in there that was, you know, maybe one big permit, you know, you can't use an average and you can't use that type of thing. That's why on the, you know, the revenue side, it was always easier just to go in, take 10, 15 minutes, plug in the numbers and then yeah. just go from there because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like anything. It's like a, per I used looked at it like a personal budget. You know, you, you, your revenue check, your yeah. revenue is never going to be consistent from year to year. Yeah, I mean, part of, part of the challenge, Mike, is that we don't have the manpower anymore to chase down the, all those numbers. So we are fully reliant on, for example, for for that revenue side, for the new growth side, for example, we are completely reliant on Greg to supply those numbers. Uh, because as you said, you can't, we just can't do like a straight geometric or linear projection off of that. Cause that right. doesn't make yeah. sense, especially as a town that's as saturated as we are. I mean, yeah. what Greg does is he pulls, he looks at the permit numbers and he uses the permit numbers to estimate the new growth revenue, but only he has access to the numbers and we don't have the manpower to like go chase down yeah. every department and we're not the executive branch. So we can't yeah. like, you know, do that. So we're relying on Greg here. So. I think, you know, that Greg and the executive branch are in the driver's seat on this. Yeah. So whatever tool they want to use, um, I think we are going to just have to go along with because they're the yeah. ones responsible for entering that data in. We yeah. are just read we're just consumers of that data. We don't enter yeah. that data in unless Greg's open to volunteers for that as well. But uh but yeah, so the the we we are just consumers. We're not providers, and we need those data providers in order to make accurate projections. Um, so I think it's important to have Greg in hear what he wants to do. But I think we also, as a committee, we can also kind of nudge him to say like, okay, you know, pick a tool that you want, but we need this tool in place. Yeah. Like I said, the other one, you know, once you up, once you, you know, you, you fill in the numbers, you can, Jillian will tell she worked with it, you know, and, you know, they would ask me, all right, Mike, update it. And I'd update it based upon what the budget was and bang, you know, I sent it to her and that was it. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was not difficult to, once you decide, you know, what the, you know, like when I did it and created it, it was, you know, really at the request of, Jillian and uh, Bob McCarthy, and we went from there. You know, they were the ones the instrumental in saying, "Okay." I said, "What do you want to see?" And then, and then I created it. You know, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something difficult. It's just knowing, you know, why was this with this? If you've had a lot of experience, you know, twenty years experience doing that, you know, it makes it, you know, you, you know what to look at. And I'll be honest, for a lot of people in the corporate world, I was 20 plus years in the corporate world. And the basis for what I did was basically from the corporate world. So it wasn't a, a unique model. <laughs> so you you were in a you were in a FPNA, financial planning and analysis, or when? In the uh, corporate world? Yeah. 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 For 20 years. I was actually 25 years. I'd started <laughs> out in accounting and ended up in budgeting. No, and ended up doing it that way. And then I decided to try the municipal world. All right. Yeah. Well, um, it's great to see you, Mike. Thank you for your service. No, to like, again. I don't tell you, she has my okay. email, she has my number, <laughs> she has everything. So you guys are more than happy to, you know, hmm. pick my brain. Yep. I mean, I did, we did it. Can we, huh? Julian, was there more stuff that we need to? Yep, we still have um, topics to go, to discuss right, on. Um, if you if you want, you know, as I said, you know how to contact me. All right. Yep. Thank All you right. so much. All right. Bye.
All right. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next agenda topic, uh, unless there's any pressing um, pressing topics here. I, th I think we did a great job of covering all the different options we have. Um, so I'm going to reach out to Greg and see if at our next meeting he can come and discuss the budget um, and also the tools that are currently being used for um, future planning. Um, so I think our next topics are routine agenda. So uh, unless there's any pressing topics from where we were before, but I, I believe we've covered them. Um, so I know uh, I'd like to jump to the updates from chair and members before we talk about minutes of prior meetings. Um, so I did want to let you know, um, let me share my screen. So um, we did get a, a meeting, um, uh, not a meeting, we got an email about the tri-board meeting that was back in May. Um, so, and we got this email from um, the planning board. So I wanted, I wanted to bring it to the committee's attention um, that there are some key public hearings that are coming up that are sort of intersecting tax revenues, redevelopment, water and housing, sort of all of the really big topics we talked about at that May tri-board meeting. Um, so one of them is a hearing for um, Powder Mill Road. So there's, um, there's gonna be a public hearing on October 24th, uh, which is tomorrow, uh, about a 36 residential unit um, building. Uh, which is at two, two to six Powder, Powder Mill Road. Um, so, and this, I forwarded this, it's also posted um, on board docs. Um, so, and there's been a lot of talk about the Powder Mill uh, corridor initiative. So sort of re redeveloping some of that area um, and the zoning of that area, uh, coordinating with the town of Acton. So I think that they are, they are doing, I don't think, I know that they are doing a very good job of coordinating with the town of Acton on this uh, and the development of that area to enhance it in a thoughtful manner. Um, so there was a prior public hearing about the, or a meeting about this. Um, there's a formal public hearing on the 15th at the Elks Club. Um, and this is, you know, the, the previous um, meeting that was recorded um, that I attended. So um, this is, to be in compliance with the MBTA community regulations. So this is um, zoning and zoning by rights. And to learn more about that, there are some links here that were shared. So I think this is something that's important to highlight to the committee that there are in that area, some potential redevelopments um, and this could impact um, some of this. So um, I just wanted to this is my update because I am the uh, liaison to the planning board. So I wanted to let you know this is from Chris. So he's the chair of the planning board. Um, so, and I did want to let you know about that because, you know, potentially this is a large residential unit. Um, and that redevelopment of that corridor is something that has been identified as a priority. So I'm happy to there's any questions on this, I can stop sharing my screen so I can see what's um, happening. But I mean, that's fantastic news. That is, um, it's a small step, right? But it's it's still positive impact. Um, do we know when the, when we expect the, um, those additional buildings to impact our growth number? What year, what fiscal year we anticipate the growth number to go up from the inclusion of those buildings? So I'm not sure. So I think the public hearing, my understanding is that the public mm -hmm. hearing is to see if that will even be occurring. So okay. I don't know. Um, I also believe that the stores or the the square footage or the space or whatever you want to call it that's being built right now at... Um, what do they call it? Downtown Crossing, where the market basket is? Is that what it's called? I always mess it up. Um, but that that area where the market basket is, the new development there um, on Parker Street. Yeah. 
yeah that um they they've identified i think a a store that's going to be the main anchor store for that new area so it sounds like that is moving forward so that is um potentially good news as well um so i think that that was my main update there fantastic What's what uh place on Parker Street? Um, they're building across from the like the market basket in the back there. They're building that new building to put new stores in. The ones so, that were uh, planned before, right? And this isn't related to that like new kennel. This is like an anchor store. Yeah. So my understanding, it might potentially be a tractor supply store. Mm -hmm. Um, but I. I don't know um, if that's finalized yet, but it's it's envisioned to be maybe something like that. So this isn't Manor Crossing proper. It's the it's it, the lot adjacent across the street from Manor Crossing. Um, I'm not sure now. I thought it was in Manor uh -huh. in that development. All right, because I, I mean, we, what we have to be careful of is that they, you know, what Greg and everyone is, I believe, told this committee prior is that most of the growth from Maynard Crossing has already played out and has been incorporated into our financials and incorporated into the calculation used for um, Proposition Two and a Half. I may be incorrect, but that's what I recall Greg telling us is that Maynard Crossing has largely played out. Um, so if this is like across the street from Manor Crossing, I think that's welcome news, but I think we have to be careful and make sure that this is indeed new growth and not growth that's already been accounted for. Other than that, the, yeah. you know, the, um, the, uh, the one on the close to the Acton border is definitely welcome news and hopefully, uh, this will get, hopefully they'll get a warm welcome from the town, um, because that will significant that will make an impact and relieve some of the financial pressure we are under all right great are there any other updates um from other members it sounds like the budget subcommittee meeting is now on october 30th um, um so I, I do have something as a uh, secretary uh so zoom recently added a new feature um, since we're already recording the meetings um, that Zoom will actually take that recording and feed into AI and actually produce a summary of that meeting. Um, that would need to be enabled by the host, but this would be very useful in my role as secretary to supplement um, the notes that I'm taking to have that AI summary um, back to back so I can go and look at that and compare that to my notes and kind of fill in uh, fill in more details than I otherwise would be able to and actually be able to produce um, much more detailed notes um, with this AI assistant. Um, but I believe the uh, chair would have to enable that feature. Um, but I would just like to put it before our members if they're okay with that, if, I, if we take the recording and use the AI summary to um, supplement the notes that I'm taking on my machine right now. I would say that might be more of a question for Greg, since this is a town uh, Zoom account. I don't know what features they have and they don't have. Um, so I can actually send you a notification right now. Like I could send you a request and you should see a request pop up in your screen right now, Jillian. Uh... Nope. <laughs> you don't? I don't okay. see. No. Okay. I mean, if we could talk to the town and get that enabled, I think, you know, this would be a service to our residents that like the notes would actually be detailed and have contents of our conversation in, embedded in it, um, as opposed to sort of the bullet points that we're able to deliver now. Um, it could actually read more like yeah. a, a news summary, an automatic generated news summary of the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, part of the secretary's role is to kind of condense the meeting into like a page yeah. or two of notes um, so that people can understand what the content of the meeting was and the purpose of the recording. And so if there's a particular topic, they can go back and listen later if they'd like to. So um, I, 
it is my opinion is that I don't know how detailed those notes have to particularly be. I think, you know, that's part of the secretary's role is to understand yeah. the quality and the content to convey the message. Yeah. So, I mean, I would ask permission for the chair provided that we could, you know, get, get the logistics of town to, to enable that summary. All right. I see. I'm going to go with uh, Nathan first since he's on the committee and then I'll go to you, Natasha. Cool. Um, I really like the idea of using AI to provide kind of like summaries that then the secretary you know, reviews and content condenses and edits. Um, I, I think it can be a really powerful tool for that. I would just advise we should check with, I don't know, like council or some sort of like data privacy thing for the town, because I know these are all open meetings, but um, yeah, I have friends who work in, you know, finance and biotech, and they have to be really careful about what they feed into AI that no like proprietary or, you know, secure information gets fed into a system that could spit it out somewhere else. Okay, Natasha. Um, I just wanted to um, give an update to FinCom that um, the school committee will be um, submitting a reserve fund transfer request for a little over $15,000. Um, it relates to a capital uh, project that came in over um, what was budgeted. It was for the bi-directional amplifier that the Chief Lawless, the fire department, was working on installing at Fowler School. So I, I don't have a lot of information on it. I just found out about it today. But I just wanted to kind of put it on your radar just to let you know that it will be something that will be uh, brought forward sooner rather than later because they aren't able to finish the project um, without securing the funding. Okay, is that something uh, you would like to request to put on the November 15th, what is it, 15th, 14th? Let me double check the date. Uh, let me, the let me check with- November 13th meeting, okay. Um, yeah, let me check. We have a bu school budget subcommittee meeting uh, on Thursday, Jillian. So let me check sure. with Brian and see that might make the most sense. Um, so if you want to pencil, maybe pencil us in for now or pencil me in for now. And then um, if you're able to, and I'll let you know if it's different, but that might just kind of, I think we need to, yeah, we need to get that done so that they can, um, we can finish the rest of the installation. So, and I'll provide all the information that Brian has the documentation <clears throat> or that estimate versus the deviation and what that, change i think it's related to some electrical work and other things that differed from a may contract okay and then jillian just uh mm -hmm. um i mean we can do whatever if the timing is tight or there's good cause but our typical process would be to you know, ensure the select board has reviewed that and give them an opportunity to make any comments before we act on it. So ho hopefully that would fit within this process also. Greg is the one who provided the information to, he's been working with Brian on it. So I will ask Brian just to make sure that they're brought along along the way. Um, as far as the, it's a uh, related to capital monies that were allocated from free cash from a capital project, so the the difference isn't made isn't accounted for over in any budget. So I'll I'll make sure to call that out to to Brian just to make sure that Greg is also informing the select board of that issue. And is that Peter something that's typically presented to the select board, and then the select board signs off on it, and then they it's presented to us, and then we no they don't. We um for the town, um, Jeff, well, Justin will bring them forward for the town ones, but for the school, they it's only goes to FinCom. Um, and we've been told that by Greg that the select board does not need to approve. Just like when we did our the ones that we had for that oil, I don't know, like maybe a year and a half ago, they were aware of it, but they did not need to approve anything for the reserve fund transfers. 
Um, I mean, that's correct. They don't need to approve finance committee as part of its general past practice would like to know if the select board has comments or if they in some way were recommending against it. Um, just, I, I think it came out of an issue, you know, years and years ago where, you know, FinCom was the only one acting and select board would find out after the fact, and then we'd find out new information. So we, you know, want to make sure that should the select board object to it, they have a chance to do so before we're approving it. So that's the general history of why we do it. I will make sure that when we submit it, that they are included on that submission. And then, um, you know, I get, I look to, to Greg to really determine if he wants us to present to them or not, but he doesn't always. Yeah. So and I, I, I'm, you're right that they don't need to take a formal action, but you know, just they have awareness they of this is coming it, down the pike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Great, thanks. All right, are there any other updates from chairs and members? Okay. Um, we do have on here approved minutes of prior meetings, but I did not get, I got meeting minutes from 10-2, uh, but I didn't get meeting minutes from any other meetings, Kevin. I don't know if there's any that you feel that are ready to go over to approve today. Uh so I just I think the ten two are is the one we have to approve. I think the other one, the other the other meeting outstanding is the um, ten ten meeting from FinCom. Uh, sorry, the ten ten special town meeting is the other one. Um, so, and are these? Have yeah. you been sending these to the clerk for posting? Once they've been uh, no, but I I can I could start I could start to send them. I'll send them over to the clerk. Okay. Um after and we this don't meeting. we don't send them drafts, we just send them the approved ones. All right. So um there been some so I have um the lit so the copy you have, those those are the draft um that this we have draft. a request okay. for. Um yes. I, if you share let me share my screen, I can then display sure. the um the the version that I would present to the committee for approval. Okay. If for future, how do I, um, let's see, participants. Uh, for future meetings, if you could potentially send them ahead of time, I can make sure to post them on board docs. That would be Absolutely. much appreciated. I, uh, you caught me a little bit, you caught me a little bit behind. <laughs> so uh, here, let me, let me share my screen. And and to FinCom meeting. Okay. So here is the minutes that I would submit to the committee for pr approval. And I'll give them I would a moment say to for read. The agenda, I would recommend to copy the um the agenda from the posted meeting, because I'm assuming that there were other topics besides just those three on oh. the agenda. Oh, yes. So I actually, that's actually, that is actually an error. Hold on. Let me update that. That was actually an error on my part. Uh, And now that this should be reflective of what you see in the agenda document. Thank you. All right. Um, so is the meeting that opens at 7.03, was that the public hearing? Yes.
for the approve the July minutes, I think we're technically supposed to put in the date yeah. so they know which July meeting it was. One like second, for the, like the ones that said July and August, I don't recall what those days were. Okay, so now. One second while I get those. I think that was the. So we can also yeah, just no. like if you put a note there, you can also just we can approve the minutes as amended as well. Then you don't have to find them right now and be like, oh, my gosh, I have to find it. So do we want to hold off on approving the minutes until I amend it with the exact dates for July? Is that what you're proposing? No, I'm proposing the opposite. I'm proposing that we say you will update and amend them to be the, what the, the notes are or what, what okay. the, the date was. Yeah. And then we can just approve the content as amended. Yeah, approve the content. You know, we can, okay. So when we make the motion, just say make the motion to approve the content as amended to include the dates of the improved, of the approved minutes. Correct. Is there anything else down below? No, that's adjourning the meeting meeting. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, a couple minor comments. Uh, on that same line with the July minutes, Khadija's name should have an H at the end. Um, similarly, uh, Glenn's name is spelled uh, K O E um, up okay. there. Um, would it be it? I'd like to see the titles of the article in addition to just the number. Um, I think it would just be clear if we want to go back and review this. I'm not, would, would that be an easy thing to plug in? Um, let me see if I can pull up the document really quickly. It should be on board docs. And I also think that, you know, if, if you noted uh, questions and comments for Article 6 and 7, but I'm pretty sure there are questions for just about every article. So I, I don't know if it might be easier just to say that there was a discussion of each article rather than like a summary. Um, so I recall that meeting pretty much. Um, let me give let me get you the titles right now. Um, so article one was the zoning bylaw. We went through this pretty quickly. Um, so the summary was read. Um, pretty much it was just the summary that was read. And then there were no further questions. Um, really, they weren't discussed. Like really the, what happened at the public meeting, as I recall, is that the, the articles were read through one by one. Um, there's a bunch of silence as we gave the... Um, or the public the opportunity to comment or ask questions. Um, after a prolonged period of silence from the public, we then moved on to the next article. And the similar thing happened for most. There was a prolonged period of silence. And then when we got to articles six and seven, that's where we had some questions from Glenn Koning and a comment by Steve Wagner and same with article eight. So a lot of these I recall, there was like just pro prolonged silence on the part of the public so we just you know gave them the opportunity opened the floor up there was silence we then moved on to the next article um that's at least my recollection maybe someone has a different one i remember glenn having a question about pretty much every article that came up okay so um do we have concurrence there from other members present that there were questions from Glad? I'm I'm not sure what it adds to our minutes saying one particular person had questions or comments about each article, but not talking about what they are. So I mean I might agree with Nathan that just saying that, you know, we went through the articles, they were discussed, questions and comments were taken from the public. Let me do this. Let me just update it.
Okay. I don't I don't know if we need to do this for each article live right now. Um maybe we okay. can bring these notes to the next meeting to talk about um based on our All feedback right. from tonight. All right, I'll um, go in and incorporate suggestion. the feedback and all right, so I will move to um, reconsider these minutes at our next meeting. Yep. I would also say at the bottom, we need to put in what our current balance of the yes. reserve fund is. All right. So I have three items. Um, the update the dates, um, put in a general summary that questions and comments on the various articles were taken and just list the articles that we discussed uh, and then to update with the reserve fund balance at the bottom. Um, yep. And I think there's I a will... request to update articles by name and not just numbers. Yeah. Too. And to update the articles by name. All right. Yep. Um, Thank so you. I will I will make a move to reconsider the minutes at the next meeting with the various adjustments that were listed. Thank you very much. And if possible, if you could get them to me, I think um, I'm supposed to post them like a couple of days before the meeting, if possible. Um, okay. That would be appreciated. All right. I will get those to you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So we're on to our last topic. So future meeting planning. So our next meeting is um, on the 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, so I'm going to try to make the main topics being Greg talking about the budget. Um, for 25 and uh, future planning, also understanding 24, uh, and see if we can get any uh, additional information on what tools are being used for projections um, and budgeting currently. Um, so we can talk about planning and future planning and make sure that that is compatible with what they're currently doing. I will also see if Marianne or a Council on Aging Person uh, representative can attend our next meeting um, to talk about this, uh, the senior center planning. Um, so I think those will be the two main topics at our next meeting. Uh, I did reach out to Justin and the trash task force. Uh, I would suggest to that we talk to them in later in November. So they're gonna give a progress report to the select board potentially sometime at the end of this month. Um, so I think um, it, we could potentially meet with them in November and maybe if them uh, the 13th meeting if the Council on Aging can't come. Um, but I feel like we might want to have them separated so we have more time to talk to those individual topics because I think they're kind of important. Um, so we won't have to have a meeting until 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, but that that is my opinion. So I I personally would prioritize um, talking with the Council on Aging over the trash um, task force, but I, I would open the floor if there are other strong members from other members on the committee. Um, I, 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 you know, as a, I've been the primary person pushing for the trash task force, and I agree that, you know, given the vote at town meeting and what I've seen that the council on aging should, should go first, and then we can talk about the trash at a later date. Okay. Yeah, and we could also use that potentially as an opportunity to talk to Justin about um, upcoming um, DPW initiatives or other uh, concerns yep. he'd like to talk to us about too. So that could be a good meeting. So, and I think at our next meeting, we might also want to rediscuss. Um, so when Greg comes, <clears throat> just to understand more about future planning um, and understand what tools they're using too. So. Are there any other pressing topics besides, you know, routine agenda and those those topics um, people would like on the next meeting? I'm missing any fires that we need to talk about. I think just, um, I mean, this would probably take place after the after the conversation with Greg and then after the trash. Um, maybe as a follow up to the conversation with Greg, we have the capital planning committee come in and talk about their long-term plan um that seems to be a natural follow-up to the line of conversation we have with greg um but it's not necessarily like a top priority for me but i think you know as we evolve the conversation that would probably be the next progression 
Sounds good. I like that. All right. Okay. If that is all of our topics for the evening, I will entertain a motion. I move to adjourn. All right. So Kevin has moved to adjourn at 9.14 p.m. Do I hear a second? A second. Oh, second. Oh. Oh, I think Linda beat you. So I think Linda Fine. seconded. Um, all right. Any further discussion or comments? Hearing none, I will take a roll call vote. Nathan? Uh, yes. Kevin? Yes. Peter? Yes. Linda? Yes. I am also a yes. So that is a unanimous to adjourn. Thank you everyone for your efforts tonight. And I look forward to our next meeting.